Hello friends, hope you are doing well. Today we are starting our extractor metallurgy lecture series. Today I am starting with magnesium extraction. Why I am starting with magnesium extraction? Because a lot of questions are being asked from magnesium extraction during a lot of PSU interviews. Let's look at the contents of the video friends. We are going to discuss why we do not do carbon introduction. Because carbon is very cheap. We would love to do it but there are some problems related to that and why there is no metallothermic reduction or why can't we do aqueous solution electrolysis or fused salt electrolysis. Friends, we can do but there are always some technical difficulties because of which we do not take any of these processes for extraction of magnesium. Then we go to the pigeon process, we look at the process and then all thermodynamic and kinetic aspects because this process seems thermodynamically unfavorable but by using Richard Fisk's principle how we overcome the difficulties we are facing and we look at the complete mechanism how we produce magnesium aquas during pigeon process. And why do we use ferrosilicon? And what is the role of iron? Friends, iron do have a particular importance in the mechanism. We are going to know that. In the end, we see the magnodem process followed by Dow's process where we extract magnesium from seawater, MgCl2. Friends, let's start our video. Problem number one, this process needs very high temperature, but we can bring the temperature down by applying vacuum. One problem, well, we overcome. But the main problem using carbon is friends, the products. Both are of gaseous in nature. So it is very difficult for us to separate them. Let's look at this equation friends. Carbon reacting with MgO gives rise to magnesium and carbon monoxide. Both are gases. We cannot separate them. The only method we can separate them is by distillation. But the moment temperature goes down, this since this is endothermic reaction, reverse is exothermic reaction. So the moment we reduce the temperature to separate these two, there is the backward reaction. So it is very difficult to stop this backward reaction. So carbothermic reduction has been ruled out because we need so many things, but still we fail to stop the backward reaction. Friends, now let's look at why can't we produce magnesium using electrolysis of aqueous solution. To deposit any metal from aqueous solution, the ore potential of hydrogen must be greater than that of the ore potential of the metal. Friends, if we plot the ore potential with the amount of current or current density we are giving, the hydrogen ore potential goes like this and for highly active metals, it goes like this. Here, the electropositive nature of magnesium is very high. The electrode potential of magnesium in aqua solution is 2.4 volts. So, by applying any amount of current, we are not able to make these two curves intersect. For any current density, if we see, electrode potential of metal is greater than that of hydrogen. So, in all these cases, on passing electricity, hydrogen evolution takes place and there is no metal deposition. So, this is the same case why we won't use aqua electrolysis for aluminum as well because hydrogen ore potential is insufficient to reach such a potential where we can deposit our metal by passing current. We never want hydrogen evolution reaction. So for all these highly electropositive metals, we cannot use aqueous electrolysis because we can never reach a potential which is greater than that, that of the metal deposition potential. Friends, I hope you understood the concept. Here, hydrogen ore potential is insufficient to deposit magnesium. Instead of having metal deposition, meaning before reaching the deposition potential of magnesium, a hydrogen evolution takes place, which is completely not desirable. Our aim is to produce magnesium deposition so that like magnesium consumes the current current passed by us, but instead of that, hydrogen is consuming electrons and producing hydrogen. So we cannot have an aqueous electrolysis to produce magnesium or aluminium. Friends, if we look at the metallothermic reduction. We can reduce using aluminium or calcium carbide at 1200 degrees centigrade using vacuum. We produce gaseous magnesium. This process is not economical because we need to apply vacuum and aluminium is itself is costly. So we cannot use aluminium to produce magnesium to industrial scale, which, which is not economical. Friends, if we look at the fused salt electrolysis of MgO, just like we did for aluminium, here magnesium does not dissolve in any of its salts. Let us use only oxides dissolve in oxides, halides dissolve in halides. But oxides does not dissolve in halides, except for alumina, which made Hall-Darrell's process possible. So that is our exception. Since MgO cannot dissolve in any of its salts, we need to make it go through a process called chloridation to produce MgCl2, followed by the fused salt electrolysis, just the way we do in the Dow's process. So, we cannot use fused salt electrolysis directly for MgO. Converting it to MgCl2 is again not economical. 
Now let's look at the most important process for magnesium extraction, which is bridging process. Perhaps if we look at the basic equation, where our calcine dolomite, first we'll take our ore with after calcination, we get calcine dolomite reacts with ferrous silicon. Both are in solid state, gives us magnesium gaseous phase to CaOSaO2 and iron at a temperature of 1200 to 1200 degrees centigrade is and under the rotation of vacuum, which is 0.1 mm Hg. Friends, on thermodynamic grounds, silicon cannot reduce magnesium oxide. If you look at the Eningham diagram, these two curves do not intersect even at 2500 degrees centigrade. We know that for silicon to reduce magnesium oxide at certain temperature, these two curves should intersect. So friends, even if they intersect at a temperature of 3000 degrees centigrade, we do not have any processes that can accommodate such conditions for the production of magnesium. Friends, here we have to drive our equation to the right side. So our aim is to make these lines intersect at lower temperature by making suitable adjustments like reducing the activity of the products or applying vacuum. We all know that Ellingham diagram is drawn at one atmospheric pressure with the consumption of one mole of oxygen. By changing the pressure, we can change the slopes of the equation. During this reaction, by applying vacuum, we continuously remove magnesium, thus by reducing the activity of the products. According to Lee-Chartley's principle, we can drive this reaction forward by continuous supply of heat and continuously removing one of the products. In this case, here it is distilling magnesium vapor. So friends, even though this equation is thermodynamically very less likely to happen, using Lee Chatley's principle, which is using the kinetics of the process, we are making the magnesium extraction to occur at a very less cost compared with the Dow's process. Bridging process consumes only 46% of the energy consumed by Dow's process, where we do the fused salt electrolysis of magnesium chloride from seawater. Friends, during the process, we take our calcine dolomite and ferrosilicon. We make briquettes. Just like bricks, we make them and we put them in externally heated furnace. We apply vacuum at the temperature of 900 to 200 degrees centigrade. So whatever this magnesium is generated, we take it out and we distill out, which means we condense these magnesium vapors. So there is a continuous removal of magnesium. So according to the nature of this principle, this reaction proceeds forward as long as we are removing this magnesium vapor. Friends, during the process, we have only one gaseous product. So there is no difficulty here, just like we have a difficulty in the carbodynamic reduction where we have carbon monoxide and magnesium both are gases. So here we have that advantage being magnesium is our only gaseous product. Friends, if we look at the direct equation, both are solids. So it is very difficult for a reaction to continue if both reactants are in the solid. The reaction only continues if both solid particles are in contact. So which is very less, which makes the production of magnesium very sluggish if the whole reaction is taking place in the solid state. That is what we get, we get if we look at the direct equation. But we get a better idea if we look at the mechanism, how this reaction is actually proceeding. At around 1000 degrees centigrade, ferrosilicon reacts with the lime and produces calcium silicon iron. This is a ternary alloy, which, which is liquid. Friends, two solids are reacting and producing a liquid. Now, this liquid is our main reducing agent. Now this ternary alloy permeates through briquettes and forms a metallic network. During this phase 2, now it is no longer solid-solid reaction. Now it is solid and liquid reaction. So at this temperature, this reaction pro proceeds quickly in the forward di direction. Hence, during this phase, because of production of high amount of magnesium vapors, the pressure builds up inside the briquettes. So after this, further magnesium generation completely depends on Magnesium escaped because we have to remove the product to form more product. So, since this pressure increase in, is there inside the briquettes, we need to remove magnesium at a faster rate to proceed the reaction forward. Friends, we are these two catalysts, CAF2 and MGF2. These two speeds up the evolution of magnesium. Friends, now let's look at the second process, magnodon process. Pigeon process at 1500 degrees centigrade is magnodon process. Magnodon process, we have taken the reactants to a higher temperature to avoid solid solid reaction confusion. So here we do not even need vacuum because at higher temperature more and more magnesium is generated. Here we add alumina to form slag and to keep the bath in liquid state so that the reaction state, whatever the reactions are taking place are not solid solid reactions. And here because of the formation of slag, we can separate out iron as well easily. Friends, why do we use ferrosilicon in pigeon process and magnodon process? Because it is cheaper, cheaper to produce 
than pure silicon and iron has a role friends these are the questions which are asked in the interview iron has a role in the generation of ternary alloy which is the main reducing agent even though if you look at the overall process iron is almost inert it just is a spectator in the process but if you look at the mechanism iron helps in the generation of ternary alloy which is the main reducing agent as we discussed during the mechanism part of the quick gen process friends why is it easier to produce ferrosilicon or ferro alloys because in the ferrosilicon activity of silicon is less compared with pure silicon in any reaction if we produce a pure metal there is a chance of some backward reaction whereas if we produce ferro alloys as the activity of metal is low so there are less chances for the backward reaction so which is why it is easier to produce ferro alloys than pure metal friends here the advantage of using dolomite or magnesite is the presence of cfo which is like an inbuilt flux which neutralizes the sfo2 by forming two cfo sfo2 so the formation of two cfo sfo2 reduces the activity of products so one way we are removing magnesium vapors and another way the activity of sfo2 is being controlled by cfo so that is the main reason or the advantage over magnesite the reason for choosing dolomite so friends another method for the production of magnesium is dowse process here we use sea water as a source of magnesium friends in the sea after chlorine and sodium the most abundant metal is or element is magnesium sea water consists of 0.13 weight percentage of magnesium we can in the form of magnesium chloride we cannot produce magnesium chloride magnesium from magnesium chloride using metallothermic reduction because mgcl2 is being very stable we cannot use any metal to reduce magnesium friends we take sea water and with the lime we do precipitation to produce mgoh twice friends we take this magnesium hydroxide and we do chlorination then we get magnesium chloride followed by the electrolysis the products are magnesium and the chlorine gas this chlorine gas is again used in the chlorination process of magnesium hydroxide during electrolysis the electrolyte bar consists of 22 30% mgcl2 around 15% cscl2 and 50 to 60% sodium chloride friends here we need to understand that these two should be more stable than that of mgcl2 else the decomposition of these two will happen preference to mgcl2 so to avoid that these two should be more stable than our mgcl2 at our anode we have chlorine evaluation and our cathode iron vessel we get the magnesium deposition friends we need to separate these two the arrangements has been made such way that there is no contact between magnesium and chlorine to avoid any possible backward reaction i hope you understood the complete process friends thank you so much for watching have a nice day